My name is Enrique Espinosa. This is video number four in the series in which we are learning how to program classes and objects using the C-sharp programming language. Now it's our turn to go back to Visual Studio and program what we covered in video number three, which was the theory on, on classes and objects, instances, getters and setters on attributes. For that purpose, we'll go back to the program we left off in video number two, which if you recall, implemented a class called Musical Instruments with three attributes called name, type, and price. Name and type are strings and price is a floating point number. The purpose of this exercise is to show you how to write the getters and setters for each of the attributes hereby shown. So let's start with the getters. So we need to write three getters and three setters. All of these methods will have a public qualifier, meaning that they can be accessible from the environment surrounding the object. In the case of the getters, we need to write the type of the attributes. Since we're starting with name, this type will be string. And following will be the camel code for the name of the getter method, which will start with a get prefix followed by the name of the attribute, which is name. Remember to write the first letter in uppercase letters. There is no parameters in the getter, so we'll just write empty parentheses. And the only instruction we need to write will be this, plus the name of the attribute per se, which will be name. And this one object will be returned to the caller. So that's all the getter does. Now let's redo the thing for the other two methods. So we'll just copy the code once again. Now we'll do the the getter for type, we'll just change the name for type, get type in camel code, and the attribute of course is type. And now we'll do the last one for the price. So we'll just change the name of the method to price. However, price is not a string, so we need to change the return type to float, which is the correct type for price. And of course we need to change the name of the attribute over here. So here we have here we go, three getters on the fly. Let's right now go to write the setters. Of course, this will be public as well, but setters do not return anything, so we'll just write public void. We'll start with a set prefix and the name of the attribute, which will be name. Now we will have at least one parameter which will have to be the same type as the attribute, in this case string, and we'll give the parameter a name, namely n in this case, and the only instruction we need to program here will be to assign a new value to the internal attribute, in this case this dot name, which will become the value of the parameter. Now we can copy the code to program the other two methods, namely set type. Type is still a string, but we'll change the name of the parameter, and this parameter will modify the type attribute. And finally, we'll change the type of set price, which will be float instead of string, and uh, we'll give it a new name though, f, so f will modify the current copy of price. So here we go, fast and easy. We have three getters, get name, get type, get price. All of them have camel names, return type according to the type of the attribute, plus one instruction, return, which returns the local copy of the attribute per se. Three setters, all of them void, they receive each one one parameter. The parameter must be of the type of the attribute. And the only thing they do is to assign the value of the parameter to the local copy of the attribute. We can go and test our code and see if it compiles and runs. Now it still does nothing useful, I know. So let's continue. We want to make instances of, our, of these objects. So we'll do that in the main procedure, of course. and Let's start by copying the name of the of the class. This is our template, so we'll use the name of the class Musical Instruments to make instances of all our objects. So we'll say Musical Instruments, Musical Instrument 1, which is an, an object which has to be instantiated, allocating memory, and using the new operator 
and passing the name of the, of the class which we want to create and that's one object we'll make another one mi1 and mi2 so I got two copies right am I okay can I work if it yes we can so let's go on now I want to start sending messages to these objects so as you recall from video number f number three we were able to write the ID of the object that is mi1 and then we'll be able to write the method we want to call in this case we want to set the values of the of the attributes so let's say set uh, name for example since set name requires a string we'll say that this is a piano and mi1 I can also say set type and Yamaha and mi1 set price 15,000 dollars let's see if I'm okay yes I am so I can continue now let's repeat the code for number two the object MI2 will be a violin it will be a Stradivarius and it will cost forty five thousand four hundred fifty thousand dollars I'm sorry I made a mistake in the in my numbers here okay so here we have two objects let's see if we're okay can we run it yes we can so let's go on now I want to produce an output to the console so I'll just write console and write line let's start using the getters then so I can call mi1 and I can call get and whatever I want so get name for example don't forget the empty parentheses and the other closing parentheses for the write line method itself so the two instruments will report themselves namely by calling mi1 and mi2 I might just add for fun a little console here just to write right line right line and I'll just say hello and I can just go run my program and see what it does voila so now I have hello piano and violin and I'm done with so after this I can do things for example like making another copy of whatever value I want to recover from an object for example I can say string uh, my type and I can assign it the result of calling mi2 mi2 get type that won't print the value directly to the console but I can do it afterwards console dot right line and I can say my type is and I can append the value of my type to the end of the argument here and I can try my program once again and here I go my type is Stradivarius which is the type for the violin so after that I can play around with this and add as many attributes as I want the behavior will start getting more and more complex along the way and after that I'll just have bigger and bigger objects so that's it for now this is the end of part four of my video series. Thanks for watching.